Hello, welcome to another video. This one's gonna be on a workflow from alias to VRED for real-time visualization. Um, this type of workflow, I always use it when, um, when I'm doing design reviews uh, inside of car design studios. Um, unless they have a, a render farm, usually it's gonna be video graphics card based. And um, in, in my videos, I use a, a dual 1080 um, uh, uh, graphic cards, gaming cards, um, and and I have to optimize everything uh, to make it as easy as possible to get these high frame rates needed for VR. So that that really, it's going to be very technical, and it's going to take you all the way from from uh, fixing the alias file uh, to to import it into VRED, and then to op and to refining the data inside of VRED for uh, real-time viz. So it is a bit long, but I hope uh, I try to cram in as much uh, details uh, to sort of help you on in your journey. Hello, welcome to another quick video. This video is gonna be how to go from alias to VRED for real-time visualization. Um, I'm actually doing this right now for virtual reality. Um, I'm setting up this nice, uh, cool scene. Um, so I had to do it anyways. I figured I should record the process. Um, and so far right now, all I've done is just deleted anything that I don't want inside of VRED. So any of the curves I used, any of the surfaces I used, the hidden stuff that I thought I might need later, everything just, um, just delete it and, and keep, uh, keep only the things that you want to visualize, okay? And, um, and for right now, obviously you can just save the file and open it with VRED. But since, since uh, I'm not going to do any data um, optimization yet, because um, I kind of want to show you guys the pitfalls and then how to sort of overcome them or why, why they happen, OK? So um, one way to sort of send everything to VRED is you go File, Send to VRED, and go. OK, so this is how it opened up in VRED. And obviously, from the get-go, we see a lot of problems. Um, one of the things too that you could quickly just to make it easier to look at is you go to view real-time anti-aliasing and you could go to medium just to kind of get rid of all the the aliasing while you're <coughs> while you're um, reviewing this um, so anyways as you can see there's quite a bit of problems uh, these came out if I turn on wireframe here these became two and it's also inverted the normals are flipped uh, to see how the normals are, you go to View, uh, and then you go to Vertex Face Normal Rendering. So er everything is supposed to be green, and as you can see here, there's a lot of like little errors everywhere, like uh, here too. And um, and I'm gonna show you guys how to how to fix these. Uh, another thing too is um, is if you go into your graph, and if we open it like that. See, this graph isn't really that organized. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, uh, like some of the layers came in, right? If I, if I go to, where's the, right, that back layer, this front copper. You know, these are all, these, these layers came in okay, but then there's a bunch of fillets that are all like everywhere and um, surfaces that are just kind of in space. So I kind of want to show you guys how to make it so that when, when you when you import it into when you open it as a inside of VRED, all of this would be a lot more organized. And why they're also like this inside of uh, uh, or why they got imported like this, you know, there's a little bit of a of um, there's um, a method to this madness. And um, and once you understand it, it's really it'll make your life a lot easier. So uh, we're gonna go back to VRED and do some optimization. I mean, I'm sorry, back to Alias. Okay, so the first thing I do when I'm, when I'm uh, uh, getting data ready inside of uh, Alias to go into VRED is first um, basically check the layers and the grouping because that's basically the most common mistake. For example, in this rear body, if I, um, uh, there's a couple mistakes here. If I, if I change it to, um, where's my rear body? Is it this? It's this one. Okay. If I change, let's change it to pink, right? Um, if I if I select it like the group, and I hide unselected, right? 
um, there's a couple things. One is there's this surface that accidentally grouped up. So, uh, so that's one of, one of the things that you really have to sort of go through the file and see what, what happened, you know? And then another thing too is um, even though this is pink, right? And, uh, and the body side layer is pink, so you think, oh, okay, this is, this is okay. There's actually an error in this, in this setup. Uh, if we go into our uh, object lister, and then we turn it on. Uh, this group, even though I'm clicking it, right, and it's, it's technically in the body side layer, if, uh, if I actually look for that, the actual group inside of my, if I, if I look at my body side, see there's no group here. It's just a bunch of surfaces. If I select my surfaces, see? So where, where is that group? Uh, usually that the, the group is actually here in, uh, in default layer because usually what happens is you know you're going through your file and um, and your, the default the default uh, layer is is um, is selected, and what you do is you you pick the surfaces and then you go control group, and if the default layer was selected, it's actually the alias is actually going to send the actual group into your default layer. So if I open it here, see the group is right here. If I do, see, so. So um, uh, that, that's one of the first errors that, and these are the most common errors. In fact, some of the ways that I, uh, I sort of find all the errors is see which are actually located inside of my default um, folder. But there's actually, to me, when, especially when you're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of work, um, there's, there's, um, there's quicker ways to, I mean, there's ways to do this a bit quicker. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys that right now. Another error is that I actually, I accidentally added this um, blackout piece into the group. And later, um, you always try to keep the data as clean as possible. Um, so so, uh, <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that too. Uh, another thing too is, is basically the, the normals of these surfaces. So if I, if I isolate this like that, and then you go surface edit, orientation, set geometric surface orientation. For this one, it's pretty much set, and it's good. Um, in fact, when I act, when I um, usually inside a studio, if I'm uh, if, when I'm doing visualization and I'm not in the when uh, I do a lot, you know, I go back and forth, and um, and I usually tell the modeling staff that you know once you're prepping your data, you have to remember to set up the orientation because honestly, it's a lot quicker. Uh, and I'll always when I'm modeling, I always make sure that my normals are all facing the right direction and also that my grouping is correct. So, um, so uh, and then there's also, for some reason, uh, the alias started this new visual orientation that is uh, a little different. And, and that, that's also, I don't know why they added this. I think what happened is they wanted to change the orientation based off VRED without um, deleting the history. So they added this like orientation on top of it. I don't really like it because geometric orientation is based off the nerve surface, and then um, and then different softwares, you know, that's all they read, not the not the visual stuff. But you know, that's how they sort of found a solution, and and so you sort of have to go through both of them and make sure that they're all facing the, the same side. Okay, so um, you know when you're handling a new data set, you know maybe you just came in, or or you know it's just uh, it's the first time you're sort of they have a full complete model. You need to sort of optimize the way you um, do these upper, like you know this data uh, cleaning. Um, so um, some of the tools that that um, that I use a lot for the for this um, section is uh, Pick. Uh, under Pick, if I go up here. Um, pick by shader. I use that all the time, uh, and that basically means that whatever's in the visible, and then you click on uh, you know a certain shader, it will select everything else that has the same the same shader. Shader. Uh, another thing too is uh, pick surface chain, um, and I'll show you guys when I use those. Uh, another thing is um, also like for example for this body side, if I hide unselected. If I if I go uh, if I pick the object and I press Control U to ungroup, see this um this upper surface position must be set to no. It's gonna keep coming up, 
And uh, I can go into uh, preferences and change that, but um, I don't want to because um, a lot of times if preserve position isn't on, you're gonna actually, um, all of a sudden you'll ungroup something and then that a bunch of um, the, the surfaces might go flying somewhere out in, in space. Um, you know, it really depends on who touched the model last. So actually what I do is while I'm doing this, I'll just go into the object lister. And for right now, I'll, I'll, um, I'll take out all the symmetry and then a way you could do it quickly is by clicking here. And, th and this, that's basically what I'm doing right now. I am just, I'm just uh, uh, untoggling the, the symmetry, right? Okay, so the first thing, the first thing we need to do is, is group them up uh, correctly, right? Um, and instead of kind of going through the, uh, let me if I open object list again, instead of actually going through the object lister and being like, okay, where is that? You know, it's okay, it's here. It's that, that could be time consuming, especially if you have a lot of, um, a lot of different components to go through. So all I do is first I make sure that the only thing visible is um, the, the, uh, com the panel or component that's gonna be grouped up in, in one material, you know? And then I, I select it <clears throat> and then I ungroup it. And then, and then uh, I make sure that I'm on the right layer and then I group them again. So now, if I go, if I open my object lister again, and if I go into my uh, body side, okay, see now the body side has the actual group inside, and inside there it has all that. And I also I ungrouped it a couple times just to make sure that there's no group inside a group for this for this um for this point in the process that you don't want that you just want one 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 uh one group and then everything under it will just be straight surfaces. So and then and then uh, wh while we're at it, let's uh, let's check the surface orientation, right? <clears throat> and then we could check the the surface orientation with the the visual. And here we only have one one that's kind of uh, that was in the wrong way. And then that's it for um, for the just for this simple layer. Uh, that's basically all we need to do. Um, but let's let's say that we, we have to use a, a different layer, you know, something that's a little more complex. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this front fascia layer. If I make it like pink or something or yellow, this layer and this layer has uh, a couple of different components, and um, and the uh, the surface normals are all jacked up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to how to do this. So the first thing I do is go. Uh, you know, layer, pick objects, and then I go object, hide unselected. Okay, and then uh, I just want to kind of go like, um, uh, I want to go material by material, you know, so I'm gonna, let me, I'm gonna uh, make this into green again. Uh, so first, as you can see, this layer has, has other materials, and then it has, um, it has different uh, like it has these things here too. So um, what I'm gonna do is use my pick shader, right? Pick shader. So now I clicked on this blue and now every, uh, I'm only selecting any, anything that has that, that blue paint, right? And then I go shift H again, which is uh, hide unselected. Okay, so now I only have, I only have these uh, panels, right? And um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually ungroup them. Like, let me check, see, because right now there's actually no group, <clears throat> no grouping, except maybe I might have the fillets might be grouped. Nope, okay, so just to make sure, because I know, like I said before, I don't want any groups inside of these groups, I'm gonna pick object and then, and then uh, control U to ungroup. And I'm gonna press it a couple times to make sure that it doesn't, it's here, edit, <clears throat> ungroup. And, uh, and so now I just have a, b a bunch of surfaces, right? Um, so how am I gonna actually select, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna select each and every one of them, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is use here in pick uh, a surface chain, right? So I'll pick this. And then there, now it, now it, it's, it picked this and uh, I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the right and the right, selecting the right group, I mean the right layer, right? And then control group. Okay, 
and then let's do the same thing here All right control group <clears throat> and then here let's do that again control group and then and then the last one is this one control group right so now I have all these groups right I have other surfaces in this file right now that I'm gonna take care of in, in a little bit but for right now I'm just sort of focusing on the paint the paint panels right so they're all just one group and sometimes I even I'll even name them if I really wanted to but for the, for this exercise I'm, I'm I, I won't so now when we check this let's go to surface edit orientation right uh, set a visual orientation see that's okay and then surface set it set geometric orientation and see that's that's all good but let's say that let's say that uh, all of a sudden I don't know like you have you have a bunch of different random ones right <clears throat> a quick way of actually doing this too is uh, um, you can you can select you know you select that group right and then uh, and then you go surface edit orientation unify surface orientation oh whoops ah uh, unify surface orientation you can cl click this box so because we want to do the geometric right now uh, one right now whichever is uh, is um, is the the one that you want to fix so then you select you make sure let me get this out of the way. You make sure to select all of them, right? right? How come it doesn't? Hold on, let me try that again. And then you select all of them. There you go. Okay. <coughs> and then here, down here, if you see, it has a little classify thing, and you press it. And then now it's going to give you these arrows, right, to kind of tell you, okay, where where do these things go? This one goes up. This one goes that way, right? And what about this one? Okay, and then you go unify. And then that's it. I think now that if you go if you go back to surface edit, see, it made everything into one. And then if uh, if that algorithm, you know, um, it, it kind of gets you. Uh, usually, it, it, it does all of it, and and everything is good. Um, uh, but if it doesn't, obviously you go back and you and you fix it manually. But this is this now. This looks good. Let me see the visual orientation. Okay, and then everything is grouped up how it's supposed to be. So now let's go back to object visible, right? Because um, uh, then I'm gonna go back to my front fascia, and then uh, hide unselected. Another way, obviously, is to hide every other layer. But I'm kind of like at this point, I I try to go as fast as I can. And um, and then see, there's there's this one, and and then there's there's these things, right? So um, one of the things I could do also is just kind of hide away the what, what I already did, right? And then oh, let's hide this one too. And where's this one? All right, we'll hide this one too. Okay. So let's see, can this be one? Yeah, I think so. Except for the, okay, there you go. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, use that pick, pick a pick surface chain like that. Group that up. And then uh, pick surface chain like that. Group that up, and then and then this one and this one. It's fine. Since these are just surfaces, you don't really we don't need to. I'm gonna double check see where if there's anything around it. Maybe they're in the wrong group or something. Um, and then, oops. Let me select nodes again, pick objects like that. 
And I think the ones that, the only things that are missing is I'm trying to figure out what's where are all these am I where Oh, I thought I did. Did I? Oh, I, I must have uh, forgotten to group them. Okay, so let's do that again. Pick, pick surface chain. This one. Oh, uh, let me. Uh, I'm gonna. I just want this one. I'm gonna hide unselected. You always have to remember to hide away anything that that you don't want the surface chain to uh, to sort of keep going through, because if not, you might be stuck for a very long time. All right, so now, OK. And what happened? This not? Oh, I must have just forgotten to press Control Group. OK, so uh, Surface Edit. No, pick Surface, Surface Chain here. Oh, OK, there you go. We'll Control Group that. And then Surface Edit, pick Surface Chain, this one. Is there two? I think there's two surfaces here. Oh, OK, well, I'll just hide that away. And then we'll group that. Oh, uh, first I, I'll uh, ungroup it. And then I'll control copy group. There you go. So I think now the only thing missing is, is um, if I go here, here, I think the only things missing are these little, right? Are these already grouped up? Oh no, these are already grouped up. Which are these then? Oh, these that's it. So so these uh that these two surfaces are just are just these little I don't know what they are. I'm gonna double check my my it looks like it, it should probably go into another another layer. But yeah, so this is a quick way to sort of uh opt uh fix all the all the problems I had with that layer. And then and then you sort of and that's basically what you do as as uh as you go through all the all the layers. And so so I'll uh I'll go through all of that, and then um, and then once I'm done with that process, I'll I'll show you guys what the what the next steps are. Okay, so I'm almost done with this part of the of the process, and I just wanted to show you guys how it ended up, and it's one of the like the final parts where I kind of like look through it, and um, uh, first I, I I go to the default layer, right, and then we have all of these like null groups. And also even groups that inside have like null groups in them. So to delete all those, you go to delete, delete null nodes, right? So there now it has now it has all now it deleted all the ones. All these are just projections for the for textures and stuff, so you don't need to worry about those. And then here you see I have a little glass, and it's one of like the the ones that um, sort of um, uh, Got a uh, slip through the cracks. So like that's the so. But now that everything's sort of like um, organized, I could be like, oh, okay, this is only one glass. It's in my rear wheel. So I'll go down here to my wheels, rear wheel, assign object. <clears throat> so, so now as you can see, my default layer doesn't have any more random groups. Uh, all it has are light groups and and camera groups. And then if we go through all my files, you know, all my different layers, they're all just just the layer and groups. And if they're surfaces, it's only because it's basically just a floating surface and we don't need to, there's nothing to group up, you know? So uh, I've got a random curve here, we'll delete that. <coughs> but if, uh, so if you see all, everything, everything is just, that's all it is. And then inside of all my groups, they're just the surfaces. I made sure that there's no other groups inside of my groups. And then uh, if I go into the surface edit orientation, see there's no, oh, is maybe I did something? No. See there's no, um, all, all, all the normals are facing the correct, the correct um, direction. And oh, the upper glass doesn't have symmetry. There you go. So there we go. Um, one other thing about about basically how I grouped all these up. Um, I grouped up like for example here my <clears throat> like accessories like this thing and this thing. I put these in their in their own layer. If I if I change their color into like maybe red, right? 
Uh, and that's because that's because um, I'm just gonna visualize this, and I'm not gonna do any animation in terms of opening the door or anything like that. But if you are gonna have uh, animations, right, like a door opening, uh, group up all of the not group up, but put them in the same layer. All the you know you would put this and this and this surface into whatever's gonna be moving in the in the uh, as a group put them in the in the same layer as opposed to but but me I kind of right now I like to organize my file in terms of like accessories LEDs copper um, you know uh, front fascia stuff like that so um, so okay I'll, I'm gonna save this out and um, and then we're gonna go into the into VRED the reason I do I do that as opposed to send to VRED is because inside of VRED you have tessellation options and actually what what you what you should really be doing is actually um, exporting each of the or the different components into into their own wire file. Um, for example, like the body or anything that's going to be painted, because you're going to want to tessellate them differently. You know, some of the some of the things are going to have higher tessellation, as in more like fidelity and look better um, than other things. And um, if you if you import them all individually, you can. Um, VRED can store that file, that data, and then you can um, you could change it up depending on your needs for your rendering or your visualizing. But since right now <clears throat> everything's a bit simple, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save it and then open it in uh, open it in in VRED. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go send to VRED because all it does it it um it, it sets up like a, a temporary file and stuff. So, but I want to kind of have everything organized and um, okay so. Uh, I will, we'll go over to VRED. Okay, so here we are in VRED, and as you can see, it is a lot cleaner. Um, uh, and remember to sort of take away this these jagged edges. You go to visualize, real time, medium, right? And um, and if you remember in the other in the first file that we just opened it up, it had a bunch of errors, and as you can see here, all the normals are pretty good. Um, and then if we look at our graph, you see everything, everything got, um, it's a lot cleaner now, you know? Everything is sort of grouped up. There's no random ass surfaces or anything, you know, it's all nice and if I have to do any manipulation or reorganizing inside of, um, inside of VRED, it's, it's really easy because everything's so nice and clean, you know? Um, uh, it, I brought in it. It brings in this light from from uh, and also these cameras from VRED uh, from Alias file, but we don't really need that, so we'll just delete that and we'll delete these cameras. <clears throat> and if I if I go into view um, for for text based normal, and you see everything basically came out okay, except for you know sometimes we have these little random errors, um, and, but all you do is you press Alt and then you right click it and then you right click it. So there now every all my normals are, are facing the 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 correct um, the correct uh, uh, direction and everything is looking good. See now we go back to visualization, realistic rendering. <clears throat> so now now uh, now we're gonna go into uh, actually setting up. Uh, making this look good for real-time visualization. Okay, so now we're going to set up our materials for real-time visualization. So um, there's a couple ways to do this, and um, I'll go through a couple of them. Um, one is you open up your material editor, and then you select, like, let's say this this glass, right? You um, uh, and if it, it, once you select anything, the material editor sort of selects that that material. Which is based on the object that you selected, right? So if I go into the glass, here's my glass dark. I don't know why it says red frosted, but um, what you could do is go right click, convert to true light, and then convert it to glass. See, and then and then here you could you could start changing the the. It, it looks pretty simple because the environment is very simple, but you could you know make it more transparent. Uh, do do whatever whatever you want, <clears throat> or if you wanna like for example, usually I kind of make it like a bit. I think I th I think I was doing it like an orange sort of glow uh, hint to it, or was it blue? I think I made like a light blue. 
What's that? Like that. <clears throat> also, even even in this thing too, you could kind of you could change that up too. And then same thing with uh, with the other one, right? I just select it, and then this one I'll go convert to glass, right? And then I wish it would keep the give it more of a purple. And then the other way to do it too is um, uh, V-Red actually has a, a library of uh, really nice um, uh, materials already, right? So you go right click here asset manager and then this asset manager pops up right and um, there's a couple ways to do this you could kind of like drag or drop right drag and drop like for example something like this you know but if you want if you want um but if you want to if you want to sort of select all of the th the stuff that's already in the in the the material that you chose in alias you go you select it and then you know this is the one that that was in alias and then you right click this and you go select nodes so select all the blue ones that you had in alias and then you click here into that into the new material we just added and apply to selected nodes <clears throat> so you know here it has a, a bunch of different uh, really cool different um, uh, materials like maybe some carbon fiber you know and then, and then if uh, if you don't really like the look of it, um, you know of, of how it came out, you know you can select it, and then modify. And then here, like for example, I think that's a little too, a little too light. But there you go. <clears throat> this, uh, for example, this is copper, right? So I'm a select, I'm a I'm a I'm a convert it to true light. Uh, chrome and then uh, here we could go to copper and use roughness and then in reflection color I'm gonna add a bit of like a warm almost pink except okay the other thing I want to show you guys is the tire material so I'm gonna make this tire I'm put some tread and stuff so uh, you write well let's create it create material tire and then apply to selected node right so the first thing we're gonna do is add the uh, we, we click here to to tell it to get the values from the object right and if we let me isolate the selection where's isolate there you go. Okay, so then when we go into here in the diffuse, right? Uh, let's go for markings. And I have my own texture that I made. Um, I might use my own. But I think uh, I think I think it comes with. Um, oh, and I and I got the wrong one. Uh, markings are the side the side profile one. So it's this one. <clears throat> See, and then um, and then the profile is the tread which is this and then you can you can uh, uh, see once once you have it textured up these little these little uh, things pop up and and this one is for if I take out the wireframe is if I click on if I sh I think I have to press shift yeah if you, you hit shift and see how they turn orange if I expand it see that that's how I texture that Right. Oh. <clears throat> and then I have my markings there. Um, they, they look like they're. They might be. And then you can, you can, uh, you could always change everything else. Like, um, uh, I think. See if you want if you want it to be. I don't know five, right, or twenty. You know, it's kind of changing, the amount. I think I designed it for ten. And then, um, and then you could do stuff with with uh, everything else too. I also have a, a roughness um, here too for the glossiness. Which I think is this one. 
And then for the markings, I think I just have And you could also use a bump texture. Now, the only, the only thing I'm going to say about this is that once you go into virtual reality, this um, for, like, for example, let me use it for this, right? Um, I have this bump texture for this. And this makes it look really cool for rendering purposes and stuff like that, you see? Um, but uh, this is actually very intensive for the GPU. So it might slow your frame rate down, which is fine in the, in, if you're just doing real-time visualization. But if you're doing VR, you're going to have to avoid uh, parallax. Um, uh, ju just to, to, let me go like 0.25. Um, uh, for, for the sake of frame rates. And then uh, another thing too is the blending, which I think is here. Maybe sort of, maybe see up here. This is a great, this is a great uh, texturing um, uh, tool set. So yeah, that's how you, that's how you do the, that's how you do the tires. <coughs> and um, I'll do, let me do the rest of the tires. And I think the other side is going to be the same, but inverted. And, um, but for right now, I don't really, I don't really care to redo it. And the, the, and the reason why is because the symmetry, it's a, it's symmetric and not an actual, its own geometry. So you would have to um, remove the symmetry and duplicate it. But I don't feel like kind of going through that right now, especially for, for this. Um, now what else? Okay, so so let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish um, texturing the back and and selecting my textures. I'll tell you uh, and I'll I'll show you what's next after this point. All right, so we're getting close. Um, I finished sort of uh, putting the materials I wanted to for for this review and. Um, and now what we have to do is actually bake the ambient occlusion into this. So um, what you do is you hit here, and then you go um, uh, right click here, bake light and shadows. This is gonna pop up. Um, I I would go medium quality, and then um, here medium quality. And, and for right now, don't, don't put the subdivision on you. Make sure that it's not enabled. And then you press calculate all. All right, we finished. <clears throat> Let's see how this looks. Mm, see, now it's looking a lot better. If we go to here, visualize, ambient occlusion. See, we can see what's going on. If you see all these like artifacts, it's not really that important in, um, in uh, how can I say this uh, for reflective glass, right? Because um, you're not gonna be able to see any of that. But uh, for example, this part, or or uh, maybe this part, you know, maybe you don't want to. You want to have a little more fidelity in the, and maybe down here too. Um, so so once you sort of start reviewing it like this, you you kind of see the errors. And and just for just to kind of show you what happens, I'll I'll do these two. Just um, you select them, right? I think you have to re you press Control Shift and then right click to select the stuff you want to select. This one too. I'll do this one too. See, you see these little like artifacts here. You kind of don't want those, right? So you select them. And this one too. And then you go back, and now, now you actually do go uh, enable. Uh, let's go with medium quality. And then um, in direct illumination, we'll go high quality. And then calculate. <clears throat> All right, so uh, see now, all those like artifacts went away. See, now it looks nice and smooth. Um, you could always, I don't know, maybe if you want to get rid of these, right? Um, we could do it again. And then since it's only one, it actually goes a lot quicker, you know? See, now it looks, um, it looks okay, right? Um, so now we go back to view, uh, realistic rendering. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, then, 
uh, we go into we go into oh we need a shadow plane uh, to sort of ground the car. The environment already comes with one, but the thing about that is that if you're gonna be switching around different environments and stuff like that, uh, the shadow plane for some reason they automatically put it down by under the environment. But I don't want that. <clears throat> I want to make my own. So what I'll do is go back up here. Oh, we'll close this. And then we'll go create, create geometry plane. And um, and I, I made it 8,000 by 6,000 and the resolution at 100, all right? So you go create. And that gives me a, a little plane right here, right? And then I'm gonna center it. Or actually, you know what? Uh, since since my car is, is, uh, isn't at the center, I'm actually gonna move my car forward because um, that's uh, the f I want it to be right in the middle of my scene. And then <clears throat> you click here, and you sort of you keep the same the same quality. Uh, make sure the maximum distance for this one is one thousand, um, because they're also it'll start sort of getting the ambient occlusion from the different like the sphere and the environment. And so I I keep it at one thousand, medium quality. And then, uh, and then with this one, the subdivision will be on. And then you go calculate all. <laughs> so and see, now we have, we have the shadow, but it still kind of looks weird. So you have to go to your materials, right? And then usually there's already a shadow material here, right? And you, and you drag and drop. <clears throat> And now, now the now now we have. Let me get rid of the grid. So now, if I if I uh, if I get the intensity up, see now we have a shadow that's sort of grounding the car. And so and so um, we're 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 getting very close to to making it what I call like ready for for um, uh, review, you know. Um, but uh, uh, this 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 environment is a bit basic. But before I add any, oh, and then remember to put the plane into your um, folder. Oh, whoops. <clears throat> um, I forgot that when I did it. I um, uh, when I add this plane into the Electra folder, it doesn't go back, you know. But it's really easy to sort of extrapolate that information, right? You, we go up here and go transform. All right, I moved it. Well, I moved it negative two six three three, but I'm gonna change it to negative two five zero zero, right? And then the plane, I'm gonna go back down to oh here, and I'm gonna do that one uh, positive two five zero zero. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, let's see what else. So uh, uh, we can add another environment, right? Um, uh, let me. Organize this. See, this is a good thing about um, the what the work we did in Alias. You know, now everything's nice and organized, and uh, and actually, what I do is I basically ha I save this file, and this would be like my simple saved um, file for for. Let me go file save. And it's basically I'll put it like just complete model or just car, you know, and then that way if I import it in to if I do anything else, um, you know, animations or anything like that, I might want to, uh, you know, for other reviews, uh, uh, place the car in there. So it's always good to have a file that's just very basic, but nice and cleaned up and looking good. OK, so um, af now now after this, I'll, I'll show you guys what to do with with this uh, with this information. Oh, it looks like it fucked up. Oh, no, no, it, no, it does. Is it supposed to be like that? No, it looks like it has to go farther back. There you go. Okay, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is select this, and also I'm going to go File, Export, Export Selected, and uh, and then this I'll just I'll just um, I'll, I'll this will definitely just be the car. The uh, logo Electra. Uh, to car only, right? And see, include environment geometries? No, because 
this file is gonna the one I just exported is gonna be strictly to place this car inside the other files. But see now that we're here, right? Let's do let's do some um, let's do some stuff, right? Some some uh, for for review. So uh, the first things is let's add uh, some environments. So we go to Asset Manager and uh, uh, here environments, and then let's just let's just go through them, right? Let's go night. Oh, I haven't seen this one. This is a new one. Uh, let's see. I don't know. They added so many. Uh, and right now, I'm just adding them to the scene. Right? And I'm also, uh, so I'm going to go to my materials and see what, because what happened is now, now our environments are, are switches. You know they they put all these environments into this thing, which is which is a switch, and I'm gonna show you uh, uh, in uh, here in material editor, in environments, it's a it's a switch. You know all the other environments are here, but they're all sort of grouped up into inside of this thing, which is a it's called the switch. I already said that like five times. I I'm sorry, but anyways, you go into V sets, right, and then um, you go variant new, create new variant, right. We're gonna call this environment. Let's go, we'll just go M by. And then hotkey, it could be whatever you want. For this like example, I'm just gonna use E. And then in, um, in material, I'm gonna put in this environment node. And then here, I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna go next and loop, right? So now uh, I added that there, I made sure that we're on E. So uh, if, I, if I go here and I press E, See now I can I can sort of like go through them right. Then another another like let's just do a, another quick one is uh, you could do a material switch right. So I'm gonna do that for the body color. So I'm gonna go here and then uh, so select so this right. Uh, and then first I'm gonna go create material and switch material okay. And then this one we'll call car body okay. And then we're gonna find this metallic and place that inside this car body, like that. And then we're gonna select we're gonna select all of these select nodes, and then we're gonna make sure to apply this new switch to the selected nodes. Apply to selected nodes, right? Now let's go back to our asset manager. And we'll go back to materials and then paints, right? Let's go metallic black. Um, oh, I, got, I guess I have to put it in here. Yeah. We'll just keep adding them into the scene by just dragging and dropping. Let's do like a red one. Uh, let's do a silver. Oh, we'll do a silver. Like that, right? And then I'm gonna get all these and place them inside that that switch, right? So metallic black in here. I think that one's already in there, right? Metallic blue light is already in there. Metallic red. In there. Metallic silver in there. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other thing, uh, with the environment, with the with the V sets, right? We click here into V sets. This pops up. We're gonna do a new one. We're gonna call this color, or I guess car color. And there's a but there's a million things you could do with this. I'm just kind of like showing you guys real quick uh, materials, and then we drag and drop that here, and then we do that same thing here loop. Right, so now I can, you know, you click here, you, you know, you take out all of these, you could um, uh, do that, uh, presentation mode, um, uh, I guess I could go full screen, right, oh, uh, let me, um, I forgot, remember, remember, just in case if you forgot, in real time, to anti-aliasing, to go to medium, the other thing too is, the the camera is a little bit too um, fisheye for my uh, taste, so uh, 
right? If I go like that, it's two fisheye, okay, yeah. So maybe something like 30. And then, uh, and then there, so uh, we go back to full screen, right? Uh, and if I press E, and I press C, See, and this is how you can you can have um, this is how you can this is how I basically the main steps for for visual visual review. The only the last thing I'm gonna do is show you uh, my custom VR stuff um, that I that was uh, aiming for. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so this is uh, one of my environments. Um, I'm actually gonna put it up for sale um, with the VR implement. Uh, implemented into it um, probably later this month uh, once I once I finish it but so I have I have it done right so I'm gonna go file import no add uh, and then we saved it in Electra which was main Electra and then Electra car only right open uh, uncheck all of these environment use from scene okay See, now it's in here. Uh, so you see the 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 shadows giving us this thing. It's because my, the shadow on the floor are exactly in the same plane. So you hit transform, and then off the z-axis, you go up like two millimeters. And there you go. And if I go, I think it should already work. Let's see, if I go view, display, oh, I disconnected my, my VR. Let me connect my VR, and then, uh, and then uh, I'll show you guys how it looks in VR. So then after all that work, I can finally enjoy seeing my car in, um, in VR. And this video was made, made more for the data prep and the visualization aspect of it, not so much the VR, all this moving around stuff that I'm doing inside of VR, that's all custom scripted. And I do have tutorials on my website uh, on, on how to sort of start doing that sort of thing. Um, I also offer those services to uh, companies setting up these sort of environments and VR experiences. Um, but yeah, I figured I, I would make this video to help uh, uh, you guys and even my clients too when they're prepping their own data, how to how to get it uh, to this point because I know it could be a bit complex if, if someone doesn't show you. Um, but anyways, this is this is um, another video by uh, Handlebar 3D. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, uh, I do apologize for making it so long, but I know it is a bit technical. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a a nice day and uh, again good luck on your 3D journey.